Okay, back by popular demand. Today we're gonna have another whiteboard video. The other day I got a question to post my opinion on high and low days, aka cyclical dieting. So let's dive right into it. All right, so cyclical dieting. First of all, what is cyclical dieting? As the name implies, it's a style of dieting where you have either high, low days or a mix of high and low and medium days, anything that goes in a cyclical fashion, cyclical dieting. First of all, when you are going to create a diet for yourself or for your client or whatever, you gotta ask, what is the goal? Obvious, right? So the goal could either be fat loss or muscle gain. It can also be a combination of the two. That's what we call body recomp, but that's only reserved for a few special cases. So we're gonna focus mainly on either fat loss or muscle gain. Now, as you may have known, because you've probably been thrown to death by this over the past few maybe years, energy balance is going to be the determining factor whether fat loss or muscle gain happens. We know that in order for fat loss to happen, we need to be in a caloric deficit. In order for muscular gains to happen, we need to be in a caloric surplus. So that's a fact. We cannot go around it in any way okay that's just a fact but the way we design the deficit or the way we design the surplus can differ cyclical dieting so let's look into a couple of reasons why we would do cyclical dieting over just a steady approach that's not to say that a steady approach is bad this could work just as well and it's different for every individual. But there are some potential benefits to cyclical dieting. So let's jump into them. Potential benefits are metabolic flexibility. So what this means is your body's capacity to switch from burning glucose into oxidizing fat for energy. And the better you are at switching between sources, the more metabolically flexible you are. This is something that you can create with cyclical dieting because if you are in a surplus or in a deficit for that matter, you can do days where you go higher carbs so you burn more of glucose and then the other day you might go low carb, high fat where you basically switch from burning primarily glucose to oxidizing fatty acids. This might also mean that you have to do a couple of days higher fat, lower carbs and then a couple of days higher carbs, lower fat but that is what we call metabolic flexibility and it is a potential benefit of cyclical dieting. The other one is insulin sensitivity. Now this has more implication in a muscle gaining phase where you are in a caloric surplus because that's generally where insulin sensitivity is on the line. So we want to be able to keep that insulin sensitivity in as good of a spot as possible. With cyclical dieting, we can create a ratio of high and low calories whereby on those low days we basically kind of hit the reset button and almost tap into our catabolic pathways to reset and improve insulin sensitivity. Coming back to my initial point, we'd still need to be in a caloric surplus over the week. But by hitting the reset button and not constantly every single day being in a very high surplus, we can potentially see some benefits on insulin sensitivity. The other one is gonna be training performance, specifically related to PED usage and some specific PEDs, because we don't really see a one-to-one -one correlation of a higher carb day. Let's say you, you use higher carbs on the day you train legs. We don't necessarily see a one-to-one -one correlation of improved performance on that specific day, unless, you use that in conjunction with specific performance enhancing drugs that work very fast, such as some orals, for example, fast working insulin, or even fast working um, testosterone, for example. Then your body can actually, especially with the insulin, use the higher calories or the higher carbs from that day and shuttle it to where it needs to go on the time where you need it to go there. So that can improve your results from training and training performance. Without PEDs, I don't necessarily see a lot of potential benefit for training performance there in a gaining phase. In a fat loss phase though, this in conjunction with psychological benefits, so that's the next one we're gonna go into, 
might actually be a potential benefit for training performance. So in a fat loss phase where you are dieting on lower calories, your energy levels go down, your energy availability goes down, you might actually benefit from having higher calories or higher carbs on a training day psychologically. Because again, it's going to come down to the weekly energy balance and everything that's stored and everything that's put out. And that is eventually going to, you know, have you sit at a average energy balance throughout the week. But psychologically, those higher calories can have a benefit on your training days when you are in a caloric deficit for a fat loss phase. So psychological benefits are there more so in a fat loss phase versus a muscle gaining phase, but they are definitely to be considered. So those are the potential benefits I see from doing a cyclical approach to, to dieting. I myself am a proponent of doing cyclical dieting in some fashion, but that's only if it actually works well for the person because cyclical dieting can be very stressful for some people. If they don't have the skill set and the time and the tools to actually plan out their meals and change the, the, the ratios of carbs to fat for each meal for specific days, then cyclical dieting might actually not work for that person and they're better off just eating the same amount of calories and the same amount of macros every single day and just have that be accurate for the goal, whether that's muscle gain or fat loss. So it's not always the way to go, but it's my preferred way. And then we also have different types of cyclical dieting, right? We can do carb cycles. So for example, specifically for the, the, the muscle you train on that day. So let's say you're doing a push workout, you're going with moderate carbs, you're doing a leg workout or a back workout, you're going with high carbs, you're doing an arm day or a rest day, you go with low carbs. And that's the way you dictate your nutrition based upon the amount of output you're basically doing in a day. That's a way of doing it. You can also simply do carb cycle where you have set out days of the week where you have high days and low days, not specific to any training day, but that wouldn't make much sense in my opinion. Like if you're gonna do carb cycle, do it in a way where you use your high carbs on training days that have the most demand, like legs and back, do moderate carbs on training days that have lesser demand, like your push sessions, and do lower carbs on training days that have no or, or very low demand, or off days that have very low demand as well. You can also do, and this is my preferred way, a training day and a non-training day style diet, where you can also make use of that metabolic flexibility pathway, where you go training days, we go higher carbs, lower fats, and off days we go higher fats, lower carbs. We might also go lower calories on off days as well. That's a way of doing it as well. And then we have any ratio of low to high. So you can, for example, do five, five low days and then two, day, two high days over the weekend. This is something you might do in a fat loss phase where you dig deep for five days of the week and then you push your calories back up for two days of the weekend or any other day for that matter. But that's an option as well. Any ratio of low to high days will work as well. Now, again, just to bring it all back, it's still going to come down to energy balance. And there are some potential benefits to doing a cyclical approach. And in my opinion, it makes sense to do so. But if you cannot adhere to it, I guess that is the biggest point of them all. If you can't adhere to a cyclical approach because it's just too much planning for you or it, yeah, it drives you nuts, then just stick to a steady approach. If you think you can handle a cyclical approach, then I would be a proponent of choosing a cyclical approach over a steady approach. And my preferred way of doing it would be training day, non-training day, but you can also choose to do a carb cycle based on the, the, the muscle group you train that day. Both are fine options to me, and they do have specific potential benefits. Again, only if you can adhere to it and if the energy balance is correct at the end. So I hope you learned something from that. If not, I'm sorry. If you did, great. Give the video a like, subscribe and comment. And let me know what you would like to see for the next whiteboard video. And until then, I'm out. Peace.